Last August, we went to Iceland to film a travel film, and for that project, KTM loaned us two different bikes. One was a 790 KTM Adventure, one was a 690 Enduro R. And this video is all about the changes we made, why we made them, what worked and what didn't. Welcome to the Project Bike Film. For this video, I think it's really important to understand how the relationship between us, our suppliers and our advertisers works. To produce a project bike film like the one we made in ISOM, we need some assistance financially to make that happen. So some of the product suppliers in this video fall under the category of sponsors of our travel film. Those suppliers were KTM, Outback Motor Tech and Barkbusters. So when it came to tweaking these two bikes for riding around Iceland, we had two really different jobs on our hands. The first kind of hurdle that we came across was the fact we only had five days between receiving these bikes to when they had to be on a boat to go. When it comes down to the 790 Adventure, we'd recently, before this trip, spent quite a lot of time testing it for our bike review. And so we had a really good idea of what we wanted to change and what we didn't need to change for it to be a great adventure bike. With the 619 Duro R, there was a little bit more guesswork and a little bit more prior research required into making those decisions. I hadn't ridden that bike for quite a long time and the previous versions I've ridden were more on the Husqvarna side of the brand with the 701 Enduro. So there were some things where there were really good educated guesses involved and some things that were a little bit more speculative and about making an informed decision. With the 690 Enduro R, that bike is very much designed as a dual sport bike. It's an Enduro machine with a large engine designed to be capable of covering some good ground, but definitely not intended as an adventure bike. So when it comes to taking that bike out of what it's designed to do and turning it into more of an adventure style bike, there's a lot of things you have to consider. With the end goal being taking this bike to Iceland, one of the biggest things that we had to kind of tweak this bike for was making it comfortable. The riding in Iceland is not typically the most technical riding in the world. So that means the riding is quite open, it's quite barren, you're subject to a lot of weather conditions. All year round Iceland is cold, but when we were intending to go at the end of summertime, going into autumn time, the temperature can start to drop quite a lot, especially in the highlands. So building a bike that was going to make our lives a little bit more comfortable was really important. When it came to turning the 690 into a bike that was more comfortable, I didn't want to go down the route of putting a big fairing on it and putting out a lot of expense because it kind of seems overkill for what we're trying to achieve. I wanted something that was light and simple, that wasn't going to fail on us in the middle of nowhere and would kind of cover all bases as quickly as possible. That started with finding a fairing structure. Now, one of the most common fairing structures you find for 690s when you look it up are big rally style fairings with navigation towers. As I said, that's not really what I wanted. What I wanted was something that was quick, easy, bolt on, and ultimately didn't require me modifying the bike in any way. The only option that I could find for a screen that would fit the 690 without any kind of modification to the bike was one made by Turitech. It's a Perspex screen with two sidebars that replaces the two bolts in the top triple clamp on each side. It was nice because it bolted up really quickly and the only kind of reservation I have with it is that this product was designed for the pre-2019 690 Enduros with a slightly different headlight mask. Because of that, the new headlight mask does rub slightly. So there's always that consideration. It will do a slight amount of damage to it. The biggest bonus with that Touratech product is that it's pretty wallet friendly. Instead of having to shell out a thousand pounds for a big fairing and a complicated tower that was gonna take time and effort to mount, I had some kind of screen scenario sorted really quickly. Mm -hmm. 
Moving on from that was changing the hand guards to create more wind protection and more comfort. One of our longtime sponsors on this channel has been Barkbusters, and they're a sponsor because I'm really, really proud of using their products. Every time I get a set of Barkbusters hand guards, they mount up very accurately, very quickly, and they're strong, they look good, and they really do the job they're intended for. The product we chose this time around was their standard aluminium backbone with the VPS plastic shield. But more importantly, what I wanted was that extra wind protection that you get from kind of a full wrap winter style hand guard. So I asked them for some BBZ shields for both our bikes, which is kind of their winter covering shield. The idea is that by keeping the wind off your hand, you can still run smaller gloves. And when it's wet and rainy, your hands aren't getting battered and it keeps your whole body a lot warmer. And I was pretty sure in Iceland that, that was gonna be a problem. Next on my list of changes with the 690 were the grips. Originally, I really wanted to fit heated grips and we ordered some, but sadly they didn't come in time, so we weren't able to fit them in the tight window we had. But our grips did come in time and the grips I chose were the Renthal Kevlar half waffle motocross style grip. And the reason I went for this is because they do two things really well. One, they're still nice and thin, like a normal motocross style grip. And two, the compound is really soft and really, really long wearing. So you get this beautiful, soft, comfy grip that does no damage to your hand, even if you're using it for days on end. And it's really comfortable to ride with. It doesn't kind of affect your capacity to control the bike in any way. These grips, because they're thin, also generally work quite well with heated grips, especially enduro style ones where you glue the element to the handlebar. So that was intended to be the other plus side. The last modification that we made in terms of comfort were the foot pegs. Getting a little bit more standing comfort can make a huge difference to how nice a bike is to ride for a long time. And for me, what I was looking for is to swap the standard EXC sized foot pegs out for something more like the rally bike. Now KTM in their power parts catalog make a rally style foot peg that fits every single one of their adventure bikes and it's awesome. It's nearly double the width of a standard enduro peg and over the course of a long day's riding when you're stood up on the pegs a lot, it makes a huge difference to how comfortable they are. They come with a rubber insert that bolts on using an eight mil bolt and a little frame and so they're modular for use between road and off-road. After we'd kind of settled on the basic comfort items, the next step was to add some protection. Fortunately, the 690 KTM is an enduro style bike, which means everything's quite neat and compact and it's kind of hard to break most of it. Um, dirt bikes generally crash really well. They'll bend plastics and so on, but things tend not to break because they're not sticking out into the wilderness and they're not made fragile. The most exposed part of the 690 is probably the radiator. And so the one thing that we wanted to protect more than anything was that radiator. You could go with a more enduro style system where you brace the radiators. But for me, I wanted to mitigate any potential risk of bending or breaking a radiator in a vulnerable scenario. If you crack a radiator in the middle of nowhere, it's a much bigger problem than if you crack a radiator in your local woods and you have to get towed out for a half hour or so. So I went looking for some crash bars, but I didn't want crash bars that were big and bulky and kind of stood in the way and were taking away from what makes the 690 an interesting choice for an adventure bike. The best product I could find online for that were crash bars made by Outback Motor Tech. I really like this design, it's really nice. It's an elephant ear shape, which kind of mirrors the radiator. It mounts to the frame, it comes in a really nice color matched orange to the point where you don't really notice they're there. They just blend in with the whole design of the bike. And I think that's a really cool idea. In terms of mounting them, I was a little bit surprised because there's one omission which I think was a little bit frustrating. The way the crash bars mount is they replace some of the engine mount bolts and one of the fitments requires a, an Allen key, a large Allen key, but a 3 8 socket didn't fit in there, which meant you had to use a normal Allen key to do them up, which made using a torque wrench not really possible. It was a small thing, but at the time it was a little bit frustrating, but otherwise they've been a fantastic product. 
After choosing the crash bars, the next kind of item we wanted to upgrade was the sump guard. The 690 Enduro comes with a really nice plastic sump guard as standard, but one of the limitations of that sump guard is the coverage. When it comes to Enduro bikes, I'm generally a really big fan of plastic. It has a lot of advantages over aluminium sump guards but in terms of coverage and availability, aluminium ones are much more prevalent. We opted to use the KTM Power Parts sump guard and it bolted up really, really easily. It uses the standard lug mounts that are on the frame with a bolt system at the front and it took maybe 10 minutes to put together. There were a few other products that we added to the 690 to kind of improve our comfort and daily usage of it and a few to make it feel a little bit more personal. The first on that list was swapping the mirror out. Now pretty much every adventure bike build you'll find on the internet swaps stock mirrors out for double take mirrors. They're extremely popular and there's a great reason for that but we thought it would be remiss of us to just go down that same path so we went for something a little bit different. It took a bit of research to find another folding mirror design that kind of looked decent. And the one we settled upon was some folding mirrors from Turitech. One of the biggest bonuses with those is that they're pretty wallet friendly. KTM also allowed us to pick something else from the Power Parts catalog. And I'm always gonna go for a nice exhaust. A new exhaust looks awesome, it improves the sound of the bike. So we opted for the Power Parts Acropovic exhaust for the 690. It definitely looks better than stock. It definitely sounds better and all round, it's just a little bit of a crowd pleaser. So, so far in the 690 build, there's two things that I've left out and they're really big. The first one is changing the seat for a more comfortable seat. I toyed with this idea a lot of whether I should get a seat concept seat or something similar, but I felt like it was a bit rude to throw the 690 under the bus without at least trying it. After all, it's only a two week ride, and at the end I'd have a pretty good idea of whether the stock seat was capable of being used or not. The second thing on this list was the fuel range. I spent a lot of time researching what my estimated mileages were and trying to figure out what the potential of the 690 Enduro was. And there's quite conflicting reports. In the end, I spoke to the guy who put the route together for us, Chris, and he had done the same ride on a 701 Enduro and an Africa Twin and said that he felt like the 690 would have no problem on stock fuel. In general, KTM claim that the bike is capable of over 300 kilometers on stock fuel and it proved to be about right. We were kind of getting the same distance that Chris got on his Africa Twin. Moving on to the 790 Adventure R, we really didn't have as many changes to make. I think if you're buying a 790R based on our previous reviews, it feels like to me, if you're making changes to that bike, you're really making changes based on personal preference. The standard bike and the standard setup of it is very good. And so the only thing I was kind of looking for for this trip was a little bit more comfort out of it. We added the same Barkbusters hand guards as we did on the 690 and like on the 690, they mounted up really, really well. Ours had the heated grips already installed, the stock ones. And from there, we also added the same rally style foot peg. The next product I added to the 790 Adventure were the PHDS made by x damped handlebar clamps. That's a little bit of a mouthful to get my head around. But the idea is that they replace the stock handlebar clamp with one that's got a little bit of a polymer rubber style damping in between and it removes a lot of the vibration from the handlebars. That brings us to what worked, what didn't and what we would keep if we did this build again. Firstly, it's worth noting that Iceland is an amazing place to ride a motorbike. It is phenomenal, but it's phenomenal for very unique reasons. The riding is good, but it's very barren and very open. And because of the regulations in Iceland, you're only allowed to stick to the made tracks. Now the made tracks are sometimes very difficult dirt roads and sometimes not very difficult dirt roads, but it's the environment that makes Iceland special. It's so different in reality to what I'd expected it to look like from what I've seen on social media and in videos over the years. It's way more of a desert. It's way more barren than I was expecting it to be. Because of that, the 690 Enduro is probably not the best bike for the job. The 690 excels when the riding is a little bit more technical and when you're 
at your limit and a lighter bike is really, really beneficial. There aren't that many scenarios where the riding is gonna really push your limits in Iceland, especially because, especially because most of the roads are designed to still get a four by four along them. We never found that there were many situations where the 690 was allowed to excel. There was a few times where the trail was quite sandy, where it was definitely nice to be on a little bike. And there were definitely times where the trail twisted up and you kind of were able to push a little bit more but without it being high speed and then the 690 came into its own but the rest of the time it was definitely a little bit of hard work you start to notice the lack of wind protection as soon as the weather turns bad or you've got some strong wind and all of that actually wears you out quite a lot it makes you a lot more tired than you would be on a more comfortable bike and it makes things like riding down the highway on windy days and wet days quite hard work on that front the screen on the 690 enduro did the best job i think you can expect a bolt on aftermarket screen to do you're going to get more comfort out of a big style fairing, but for the money and the ease of use, I think the Touratech screen is a pretty good effort. If you're not aiming to ride 200 kilometers down the highway in driving wind and rain on a regular basis, this screen's going to be good. It didn't intrude on my riding style in any way. It was clear, so it was easy to see through. And as a result, it didn't make the more technical times intimidating in any way. So when you're crossing rivers, the screen's never in your way. You can still see really easily and so on. The next product on our list were the Barkbusters handguards with the BBZ shields. And without a doubt for me, this kind of shield in a cold riding environment is an absolute must. One of the best parts of the BBZ design is that Unlike a more closed off muff, you still have complete freedom of movement. So when I'm riding stood up or I'm sat down, they don't impede me in any way. The opening is really big on the backside, which means you lose a tiny bit of kind of comfort potential, but you gain a little bit in your riding comfort and maneuverability. So it's kind of a really nice trade off. One of the other things for me that's been really good about the Bug Busters is that their reliability upon dropping the bike is really good. They're durable as hell, they mount really well, they don't seem to come loose, and just as an all-round product, I'm really happy with them. In terms of the last part of the kind of comfort side of things is the foot pegs that we fitted. For me, those rally foot pegs are a big improvement on stock on this type of ride. If I was still riding a 690 in a more technical environment, I think I'd stick with the stock foot peg. But for those long days in the saddle, that big rally foot platform is just better to ride on. I'm not convinced about the rubber inserts. They work really well if you use them, but for me, one of the most frustrating bits is having to bolt them in and out all the time. It's just a bit too much faff to the point where I just don't bother. The Outback Motortech crash bars that we fitted are also another product that I was generally really impressed with. They're strong. They're really, really strong and over the course of the two weeks i never had a problem with them my only two gripes are the one i mentioned about fitting earlier and my last one is that there was a few times where when i was riding in more aggressive situations and my riding style changed to sitting down you noticed that the crash bars existed i think for an adventure riding situation the crash bars are a brilliant design because they they limit the potential of any damage to your bike in a way that's neat and tidy they look really good. But if I was gonna ride this bike more exclusively in a dual sport style, where I was riding a lot of single track and needing to be really mobile on the bike, I would probably not use them. They're brilliant for what they're intended for, but it's really important that you understand what they're intended for. The KTM Power Parts Sump Guard is also a really nice product. One of the cool things about the way that KTM have designed the frame is how the sump guard mounts to the lugs. Those rubber mounted lugs kind of create quite a nice redundancy, which means it's never solid mounted to anything like the engine. Our sump guard did take one seriously big impact and it was kind of a freak scenario. A really big rock kicked up from underneath the front wheel, hit the sump guard hard and stopped the bike dead. It took the impact completely in the bottom of the sump guard. It changed the shape of the sump guard, but because of that lug design that KTM have got, it kind of allowed for the point of breakage to be one of those lugs rather than anything critical. In that regard, I think the sump guard did a fantastic job. 
because only one of the mounting points failed and it didn't fail completely, it still meant the sump guard was completely usable for the rest of our trip. I was able to take it off, put it back on, and it was kind of still okay. I think it all in, it's a really good product and it did exactly what we asked of it. While I really like the design of the Touratech screen, the same can't be said for the mirrors. One of the things that makes a double take mirror so effective at its job of folding out of the way is that it can articulate at both ends of the stalk in any direction you want it to. So wherever you put it, you're able to fold it in the direction you want. And Touratech's design is quite different. It's got one single articulating joint and then one kind of odd pivot joint at the top of the mirror. And the end result is that you're quite limited in the direction in which you can move it. That knuckle at the bottom only moves in one plane. It doesn't have kind of 360 degree rotation. So getting it into a point where you can see well with the mirrors is really difficult. And then finding a balance between being able to see well and have the folding capability of the mirror at the same time was just tricky. I never managed to find a point where it all worked as I wanted wanted it to, it always felt like a compromise. And kind of the one thing that accentuates that even more is the fact that the mirror glass is quite triangle shaped and also quite small. All in, it makes for a product doesn't quite do what you want it to do. The price point on the Touratech mirror is really good, but the end result was a product that I'm not particularly excited to recommend. The last part with the 690 is talking about those few things that we left out. The first on that list is the heated grips. This bike needs heated grips, full stop. If you're riding it anywhere cold, fit some heated grips. Because the wind protection isn't very good and just the design of an enduro bike in general is quite vulnerable for the rider during harsh conditions, it's a cold bike to ride. That would get better if you had a bigger fairing, but I still think the general shape of a 690 means that the wind protection is never going to be great. And so the need for heated grips to maintain good body temperature was more so. The second thing on the list that I would look to change in future is some form of vibration damping. On the 790 Adventure, we fitted the X-Trig PHDS handlebar clamps, and those did a fantastic job of dampening down the handlebar vibration and making the bike much more comfortable. If I was gonna take the 690 again, I would look for a solution that did the same thing. I think they're probably the best solution I've seen on the market for creating kind of essentially a rubber damped handlebar because the price point isn't horrendous, but the result and the product itself is fantastic. These come standard on on KTM's rally bikes and they come standard for a reason. They really work. The first big omission from this bike that we talked about earlier was in changing the seat to a more comfortable solution. I'm glad that I gave the 690 Enduro seat the opportunity because it really isn't as bad as I expected. I was expecting because it's a hard Enduro style seat and the profile of it is quite rounded and essentially narrow, it wouldn't be that comfortable on long days. And it isn't particularly comfortable, but it's a long way from being incredibly uncomfortable. Because it's long and relatively flat and it does widen out a bit at the rear, you've got a lot of scope for moving your body position around over the course of a day's riding. And so generally you can live with it. However, if I was gonna do this build again, I probably would opt for a more comfortable seat. And for someone of my height, I would actually raise the seat height up a little bit to give you a bit more cockpit space. The last big thing that we didn't change with the 690 was the fuel range. Interestingly, the fuel range is actually pretty good on the standard bike. We were definitely able to squeeze 280 kilometers out of it and not run out. I think you could push that to 300, but obviously you never want to reach the point where you're completely empty. And if you're looking for more than that 250, 280 kilometer fuel range, there's some really neat options that mean you don't have to change the ergonomics of the bike. If I was in that scenario where I was gonna use this as an adventure bike, I think I would go for one of those. And one of the neatest options I've seen is the auxiliary tank from a company called Raid. In terms of bang for buck and making the bike similar to stock, that's a really good solution. Still being able to do the distance you can do on stock fuel tanks is pretty good. I was suitably impressed that 13 and a half liters will get you that kind of distance it's the same kind of distance that we were getting from an Africa twin in the same environment.
when it comes to the changes we made to the 790, on the whole, that bike is a very different story. I think as it comes out of the crate, it is very much ready to ride as an adventure bike. And those changes you're gonna make are, are generally gonna be really personal. There was a couple of little tweaks that we made that I think are fantastic. I love the handguards. I think they're a brilliant design. And for this kind of cold weather adventure, I would 100% fit them again. The second on that list was the handlebar clamps. And for me, those handlebar clamps are phenomenal. They make a really big difference. And especially on the 790, that surprised me. I didn't find it an uncomfortable or particularly vibration filled bike when I first tested it. But when I went back to riding a 790 without those handlebar clamps, I felt like something was wrong. I like the position that it moves the handlebars to. I like the comfort that I got from having a bit less vibration. And if it was my bike or I was gonna do this project bike again, I'd 100% fit them. Likewise with the 690 Enduro, those rally style foot pegs are also fantastic. And unless you're riding a lot of quite technical Enduro style riding on your 790, I would fit them. They're just comfortable to ride on. They're a better platform for standing up on for a long time and generally a better foot peg. Again, I think they're a little bit expensive for what they are. Essentially, they're the same style of foot peg, just bigger, and that costs you about 140 pounds as well. But I think it's an investment that you'll thank yourself for in the long run. The Bridgestone AX41 tires also seem to work quite well across both bikes. I was really impressed with the grip on the tires of these bikes. They worked well for an adventure tire and fit the 790 really nicely. They work great on the street. They work great on the off-road. And the only time I really found myself lacking any significant grip was on one specific morning in some freezing fog on a polished wet dirt road and then I felt like they were a little bit sketchy but that could easily have been because we were running slightly high pressures to avoid punctures. Following on from that is the conversation about how long these tires last. It's a bit difficult to tell when riding in Iceland because most of the ground you ride on is volcanic ash, most of it is off-road if you go through the middle and so your tire wear is definitely accelerated. We rode about 1600 miles in the two weeks we were there, 1100 of those were off-road and that gave the tire about a thousand miles more under the same conditions of life. I think at two and a half to 2,800 miles, the tire would be destroyed, but it's a very abrasive environment and I don't know if you would get the same reaction elsewhere. The last point of note with the 790 is the sump guard. Generally, I'm a huge fan of KTM's stock design for the 790, but there is one small limitation in that the aluminium belly pan is a little bit on the thin side. Our riding in Iceland never put that to the test in terms of direct impact. And so we didn't really put this through a torture test. The kind of biggest test this sump guard got was from rocks flicking up from the front wheel. And they were definitely enough to put dents into that sump guard, which would suggest it's a bit on the thin side and a little bit soft. However, the design is really good. So there's a few companies out there that are making replacement central belly pans so you can keep the plastic wrap wrapping around the tanks, which keeps everything neat and tidy and quite compact and relatively light. If you're not into that and you don't trust it, there's definitely some awesome options to go for a much beefier, bulkier protection system. And that's gonna be really personal preference. Otherwise with the 790, I think it's really ready to go. So that's about it in this discussion about our project bikes. If you've got any suggestions or questions about the products we used, feel free to drop them in the comments. I'd love to hear them. And otherwise, if you haven't seen our Ice and Travel film, please go and watch it. It's a really different travel film to the things we've done in the past. And it's something that we put a lot of effort into and are really proud of. If you like this channel and you're really into adventure bikes, we also run a monthly podcast for our Patreon subscribers. So if you click the Patreon link at the end of this video, you can learn a little bit more about that. Last Lastly, we just had some new merch land. You can see one of the t-shirts behind me. If you head over to our shop or look down in the tray beneath this video, you'll see that there's some merch there and take a look at that. And otherwise, thanks very much for watching and remember, life's better when you're riding.